your change, sir. you leave your hobby to me. I write the newspaper for them. Now they want me to read it. <laughs> Rather be separating you yokels from your nickels. So I take down my repertoire and pull out an English butt. Something may have happened. Everything's already happened to this town. We're up to our hips in it. Say, talking about hips, I gotta call my wife. You, hop out and find McKay. Try to be jump in the neighborhood. All right, Chief. And you. You work your way up town until you get to McKay's place. You'll find him somewhere between here and there. What's your aunt? Yeah. Pop, see if you can dig McKay up. I just came from Miss Hines' house. He wants him on the Pearson murder case. I'll send down the alarm. Okay, they looking for Mr. McKay? You're right, son. No, I'm looking for Mr. McKay. Wrong again. You're looking for Mr. McKay. Go on, get going. Yes, sir. Where'll I find him? Oh, a shopping bag. Try turning over a few manhole covers. 
I don't know. If you find him, tell him your father wants him. Yes, sir. I'm out. All right. Thank you. He wouldn't know the name. I'll call later. Very well. He wasn't home. We can't get McKay tonight. I don't want to leave this here. Dad, you're in trouble. I don't know. But first, we've got to put this in a safe place. Well, what's in it? This stands for everything that is greed and sudden death. That envelope contains all that? One hundred thousand dollars worth. I won't ask any questions, Dad. I want you to take this to the railroad station. You'll find a number of lockers there. Put it in one of them, and then we'll give the key to Brad McKay. Brad McKay. A newspaper reporter. Lloyd Pearson said he was honest. The only man in this town who wasn't afraid to face the truth. We've got to trust him. Be careful, darling. McKay's been following the Pearson investigation. We may get something out of him. Brennan's trying to reach him now. Uh, did you get him? I tried three times, and every time I get a different accent. First it was a Chinaman, then a Greek, and now Hitler answers. It don't make sense. Keep trying. Anything exciting, Doc? Right through the brain, 38 caliber. Didn't know what hit him. <laughs> That's the way to go, quick. When do you think it happened? Oh, three hours ago or thereabouts. I'd say 8 o'clock. Uh, what an autopsy? Yes, I want a full report. There's going to be a lot of heat on in this town. Let's check the apartment. No, I don't want goulash. I want Brad McKay. Any luck? Could you use a Hungarian? No. Keep trying. Victims, there's no use bucking me. In this anemic little hand, unmanicured, untainted by graft, I hold four beautiful little queens, four fat, juicy aristocrats, all screaming, give in, boy. Brad, I don't believe you. Moroni, if you only had faith, I'll raise it. Unbeliever, that will cost you double. I'll call you. Uh, you cheated me with the truth. <laughs> The difference between you and me, Maroney, is that I was interested in what George Washington said. You were interested in his acts. No, oh, Brad, you're the only one in town I don't mind losing to. I never forget favors. Only reason I went to the front for you is because I felt you were being railroaded. And if you hadn't, I would have been holding up a tombstone. Can't say that the city would have suffered much loss. However, Maroney, you were innocent. I cleared you. Let's forget it. That's last month's headline. <laughs> The after theater crowd is starting to drop in. Mr. McKay, there's been a murder. People are always getting murdered. Come in. Guy, meet the folks. My father's very anxious to see you. About the murder, yeah, but the stiff's not going anywhere. Now meet a cross section of the city. Characters, this is Guy Norris, who you. someday will be the sole owner of the Daily Chronicle. Only then will our polluted city be a fit place in which to live and to bring up our children. But who wants children? Oh, Guy does. He's just that kind of an upright, clean, living lad. Yeah, but what about the murder? 
Right now, our populace is being sucked dry. Right here in our fair city, you can get whatever you're willing to pay for, right or wrong. Somebody holds it right in the palm of their dirty mitt. But, ah, help is coming. A crusader has arrived to dig into the foul backwash that sends a smell over this moldy metropolis. But our special prosecutor gets through. But he's the one who's been murdered, Lloyd Pearson. <laughs> Gentlemen, the press. China and Russia was great. Oh, no. No, I said McKay. It's such a simple name. McKay. Are you looking for Mr. McKay? Yeah, Brad McKay. Keep trying. Yes, sir. I hate you. Well, are you girls through? Where have you been? Honest, Quinn, I didn't do it. McKay. Any angles? No, that's why I want you. Now, you've been following this investigation. Somewhere in these facts might be a clue. I'll reach down my little aspirin bottle and see if I can't pull you out one. Hello, Butch. What hit him? 38. Got a piece of gum? Say, Mr. McKay, I've got an idea. Did you hear that? That's youth. Wish I had some. All right, what is it? Well, a special investigator usually has enemies. All we have to do is find his enemies and we'll find the murderer. So start with his friends. That'd be easier. Probably had two of those. Look, sweetheart, he's not interested. I am. But one of my identification cards makes me look like a zombie. Get me smiling. Ah, thank you. Don't forget to touch up the bags under the bags under my eyes. He's a photographer, not a genius, Brad. Come on, Inspector. Haven't you got a lead? One, and we're picking him up now. Is it a secret? Imagine keeping a secret from you. Versus is the man we're looking for, and I have a hunch that Vince Maroney's name fits under those blots. I'm sorry to disillusion you, Inspector. You're up the wrong alley. Maroney's got an alibi. Or else he flew from the scene of the murder up to my place. Don't worry, we'll break the pigeon down. You brute. <laughs> I want to phone in the dirt, okay? Mr. McKay, are you sure about Maroney? He's playing poker up at my apartment all night. Where did the police get the idea? I mean, the night desk. Police don't have ideas, they have uh, imagination. Hello, Pop. This is your joy boy phoning in some copy. Now listen, hit. All right. Chief wants to talk to me. Hello, Mr. Norris. Well, I'm right here in the apartment, sitting right next to the body. Well, quit worrying. Push me back to the copy desk and read the whole story in your own paper. Uh -huh. Copy desk. Take. Now, here's the present angle. Police are sending out a dragnet for a suspect. Yeah, Vince Maroney. Just say the Daily Chronicle thinks that Vince Maroney has an airtight alibi. More later. Angel. What are you going to do now? Slight pause for station identification. What? Who are we? What are we doing here? You got to think, brother. Start thinking. Go back to the office. Why? Go home. I don't get it. Just go. Look, Ducky. Every time there's a rap in this town, Maroney takes it. Not that I'm protecting him, mind you, but it's boring. Now, if you'll just get in touch with the young lady who called my apartment about an hour ago, you might get somewhere. Not with my wife, McKay. Why don't you write your copy and let me make the news? Maroney will be picked up before morning. Inspector Thomas. Why didn't you tell me? Your eyes were blue. This is a tough rap, Maroney. 
Why don't you speak up and make it easy on yourself? Why don't you stop being a policeman? I told you I don't know anything about it. Why should I knock off Pearson? I never had anything against him. Your kind doesn't have to. You do anything for a dollar. You hurt me, Inspector. I'm a big man. What would I be doing with a dollar? Most anything. That's why you're here. Now, this is for the last time. I was with Brad McKay. That's right, Inspector. He was at my place all night, losing his hard-earned dough. We'll still hold him on suspicion until we get the doctor's full report. You see, Pearson phoned me at dinner time, said to pick up Maroney and uh, take him over to his place. Said he was ready to crack the case. When we got there, well, you know the rest. Sorry, Inspector, you'll still have to let Maroney go. He's got one of those friends out there with the writ of habeas corpus. Sorry to break up your plans. Do you mind if I talk to Maroney? Oh, come on. Let's get out of here. This place is as foul as a garbage dump. Come on, Maroney. Stop it. Remember Hugh Walker? Walker? Well, no. Pearson's assistant. Yeah. Got disbarred for taking bribes and getting caught at it. That's what you think. It was the other way around. Pearson? Yeah. And he made Walker take the rap, so Walker's out for blood. It's very simple. He's the one who knocked Pearson off. How do you know? Pearson was getting a payoff. From whom? I don't ask questions. But a rough guess will tell you it's the big boss. You don't know him? Who does? How much was the payoff? A hundred grand in marked money. So they were out to get Pearson, huh? Yeah. But somebody got there first. They didn't find the money, did they? They did. The inspector would have said something about it. I'm going to do you a favor, Brad. And this evens us up. Find Walker. If he's got that dough, it'll tell you who bumped off Pearson on two counts. A grudge and heavy sugar. Company, Brad. This is McKay. I want to talk to Guy Norris. and get on the Maroney data. Use your news sense. Pick out the important facts. Then come up to my apartment and have a bite to eat. When do you get off? About 1 o'clock? Get there at 1.30. Right? What are you thinking about? There's more to this than that tin horn Maroney. I think Pearson meant to tell me what it was. That strange woman that called me tonight. Oh, don't bring your women into this. We'll get the truth out of Maroney yet. That won't be easy. Are you on my side? Yes, blue eyes.
he knows everything. You're crazy. I talked to him at the station. The hunchback met him in front of the hotel and gave him the tip. I saw. Thanks, Nubby. Come in, Norris. I left the door open. Pour yourself a drink, kid. came this way. What'd you do, lose the scent? Mind if I look around? Help yourself, Inspector. Uh, keep out of my drawers. All right, McKay, I believe you. But listen here, Brad. Moroni thinks you're his friend. I know better. You're Brad McKay's friend. I'm a selfish beast, Inspector. You're a cold fish, McKay. But Moroni's one lug I want. So don't play both ends. It's a pleasant visit, Blue Eyes. Don't fall down the stairs. They've never hung a newspaper man, have they? Think I ought to set a precedent? You know, Brad, it might be a novelty. Pretty big gun for a little lady. Why don't you use this instead of making it tough for yourself with a knife? I heard somebody come in and I hid in there. You mean you didn't know about him? No. Let's get 
चमकदार है Looking young man. Oh, I didn't know that, Brad. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Well, is it, is it all right for me to come in? I guess so. Is that you, fella? Oh, yes, yes, it's me. You mean it is I. Come in here. I need some help. Need some help. Excuse me. Over here. What happened? Who did it? Don't ask any questions. If this is found here, I'd go up for life. Let's get him out first and talk about it later. Come on, help him get him out of here. Yeah, but somebody's liable to see us. Oh, if he's see us, he's drunk. We're taking him home. But, Mr. McKay... Go ahead. Slip out in the hallway. See if everything's clear. Gee, he's heavy. Heavy? He's dead. Tell the inspector. They want Maroney? Well, they can have him. Oh, I wish I'd have stuck to law. You're in it, sweetheart, up to your hips. But what are we going to do now? We're going to see your father. I know your father couldn't come to see us, or he would have sent you in the first place. Oh, I can... Hold it, baby. We'll get it all at once and save time. Wake me up when I get there. Uh, by the way, uh... My name's Guy Norris. Ooh, I'm Phyllis Walker. <laughs> Excuse the oversight, kids. Uh, this is Guy Norris. Uh, this is uh, Phyllis Walker. Cute, huh? <laughs> Say, uh, you look tired. Oh, I'm not really. I guess I'm just frightened. Or at least I was. <laughs> oh, well, you can forget your worries now. Baby? You haven't said that very often. Baby, I mean. your father wanted to see me? Oh. He wanted you to have his key. If it's a lock in the railroad station. I put a package there tonight. He was afraid to keep it here. It... Do you know what it was? Oh. He said something about $100,000 to Mr. Pearson. That's all. That's enough. What is it? History in the making, sweetheart. Will you do me a favor? Well, I'll try. Go out there and make me some breakfast. But aren't we going to do something about Dad? Well, you got to keep your strength up. Her heart's breaking and you want breakfast. We can't dash off madly without knowing what direction we're going to take. Go on out and scramble me some eggs, will you? You go help her. I'll think. He's a little weird, but he gets results. Your father once worked with Pearson, didn't he? 
why he's still dead. Wasn't there something in the paper about his being disbarred? Yes, but Father agreed to it as part of their work. Oh. Well, that, that's logical. Walker, discredited by Pearson, that gives him entree to the very people they're after. They must have welcomed him with open arms. Since then, what's he been doing? Why, he's been working in a, in a gambling place. He never said much about it. Uh, you ever say anything about a guy named John Angus? Why, yes. He's the man who owns the place. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Come on. We got enough strength to get down to the station and pick up that parcel. Have you any idea about Father? I got a good idea. As long as that hundred thousand is intact, your papa is safe. to the locker. If you're playing button, button, I don't know what you're talking about. Take it easy, kid. This invasion won't last. That's where you're wrong. Now, give me the key and I'll see that no harm comes to your little friends. Don't give it to them, Brad. They're yellow. They won't do anything. To the contrary, we're prepared to do most anything. How do I get the key? You don't believe me. Show our guests that we mean business. <coughs> you win. All right, kid, there's no use putting on an act. Please, Mr. McKay, don't tell them. I'm not interested in watching our American Gestapo at work. I'll dig it out. But it is. Give me a purse. I never could figure where women get all the stuff that they put in one of these things. <laughs> Talk about soldiers carrying a pack. Cut the gear. All right, Gebbles. I never had one of these. In fact, I think it's a good idea. Reach for the ceiling, suckers. Go on outside, guys. See if it's clear. Nobody there, Brad. Go ahead, you two. Thank you. 
kid. Come up to see me sometime. I'll mix you up some rat poison. Hello, children. Any luck with Maroney? Yes and no. We found him in Lincoln Park. We searched his belongings. No gun, no breath, no life, no nothing. He was as dead as a mackerel. I know he'll be glad that you cleared him. I'll flag a ghost train and get in touch with him. I'm sorry to disillusion you, Inspector, but Maroney did knock off Pearson. What Ouija board gave you that information? This is the McCoy, Inspector. The hunchback saw him go up. The hunchback? He was shot. Found him dead in front of Pearson's apartment. Oh. Poor God. Nature plays him a dirty trick, and then we finish it. But it makes sense, Inspector. We were being watched. The gun that killed Pearson killed the hunchback. Photographs prove it. There you are. Twins from a 38. Maroney was never an executive. He did a job for someone else. Whoever he is, that's the man we're after, and he must be important. They usually are. Wish I knew where to start. Come to think of it, I'm lucky to be here. Somebody saw the hunchback, tipped me off. Maroney was notified. He knocked the hunch out of the way. Then he came right up the room. Uh, Go on. I was just thinking out loud. You stopped at a convenient place. Who knocked off Maroney? The man who hired him to kill Pearson. Figured he was too hot, and especially since I got wind of it. That's very nice. That leaves me at the beginning. I'm looking for the end. Take it easy, take it easy, blue eyes. We'll get there. When? I saw a couple of Maroney's friends this morning. Now you're talking like my boy. Got tired of carrying my manuscript around. I dropped in the station to check it. Two of the boys were there, acting like they had something on their mind. I'm going back there right now. I could use company. And protection. Come on. You're so masculine. He's got the cops with him. That's the pair heading for the exit. Tag them. Come oh, on. You got a dime on you? No. I just wanted to know. <clears throat> the great American novel, Daddy. How do you have the patience to write all those words? You would, too, if you got a hundred grand for it. Is that what it's worth? One hundred thou. Not a penny less. Listen, Brad, this is my treat. You go up and see a psychiatrist. He won't hurt you. They're like mothers. He'll tell you the truth. He'll tell you you're wacky.
Business as usual, huh, Pete? Guess the suckers can't wait. No, sir, Mr. McKay. Just make yourself at home. $100 with the plastic. Drew me here. Are your dice loaded, mister? Give me a pair that's been sterilized. My mama done told me if you keep them warm, they'll perform. My mama was wrong. You want to see every hundred dollar bill that came in? gave it to you. He's still out there. showed up. You're crazy. Not my fault, really. My mother wanted a boy, my father wanted a girl, my uncle wanted an electric train, my aunt wanted, but she was a pacifist. She wanted peace. <laughs> you see, they all got their wish. <laughs> you poor boy. You know, I had an uncle who was a pacifist. He used to go around beating everyone's head in to believe him. Uh, you don't say. <laughs> oh, pink champagne? Bourbon. Bourbon? Pink champagne. Then I must think we're camels. I'm thirsty. Hey, what about those cigarettes I sent you for an hour ago? You. Oh, that's a newspaper man. <laughs> Wrong guy. I'm sorry. Those things will happen. <laughs> What's that all about? Oh, uh. That was nothing. That was just one of the... How many people have told you you're pretty? You never took notice of me before. I did? Well, I mean, I've seen you here before, but you've never seen me. Was I sober? <laughs> 
You're Brad McKay, newspaper man. I wish I knew half as much about you. What do you do? What, what's your name? First question is personal. My name is Alma Dorn. You see, I've met some friends of yours, so my knowing you isn't so mysterious. Do you, uh, do you mind if I pinch you? Provided you don't hurt. When I saw you over there at that roulette table, I didn't think it was real. I afraid it might be stuffed. Satisfied? Better than I expected. Here's to a bigger and better understanding. Me too. I didn't know it was so late. You gotta get back to the office. Can I drop you someplace? Oh, no, thank you. I, uh, I have an appointment here with some friends. Well, see you again? Sooner than you expect. I hope. Good night, baby. Thank you for a lovely evening. My nose is shiny. On my way to the office, Dad. Coming along? I'll be down later, Guy. Okay. Things going all right, son? Ah, oh, swell. And boy, that McKay, is he a great guy. Not many like him. No. I'm afraid there aren't. Keep pitching, son. I want you to help me run the paper. You know, I've planned big things for you. Well, I'm learning fast, Dad. See you in the next edition. Some hours, banker. Yeah. What's cooking, Pop? Chief wants to see you up at his house. At this hour? Anything on the Pearson case? Just some copy. It's too hot to write. Dug up $100,000 in bribe money today. Belonged to Pearson. Supposed to be a payoff. Payoff to Pearson? Do you know who made it? No, but I found somebody who does. The bills were marked. Cash won them at the High Low Club. I figured Angus might tip his mitt. And? He did. Poked a gun at me. <laughs> But somebody got in the way. Angus? I don't know. But it stuck out of his office. This is dangerous business, McKay. The newspaper should turn the money over to the authorities as a public service. Oh, don't go soft on me, Chief. There's a guy named Walker ought to know something about this payoff. If I could talk to him, break this thing wide open. But just look out for libel. Angus is a tough customer. You got a light? I didn't say it was Angus. Angus is just a front for the top man. One who's taking tribute from every citizen. He's the dictator. We hope to take the curse off of this city. We've got to knock him from his throne. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, we ought to put that money in the safe uh, where it belongs. Where it is now, Chief, no one will ever find it. Uh, where is it? Where no one will ever find it. <laughs> All right, McKay. But be sure you know what you're doing before you do it. If I get off on the wrong track, or we got you to set me straight. I wish I know how you meant that. By the way, where are you going now? Oh, I don't know. Routine, the inspector, a few drinks. Maybe catch up on my sleep. They got a bunk for me down at the police station. So long, Chief.
Brad, I didn't mean it. I When you threw the vase, I was front. Don't feel bad, baby. You didn't disappoint me. There it is, over there. Take, take it. It's no good to me now. I don't want it. Brad, believe me, please. I, I did what I was told. John Angus. That's all right. I won't talk. A few, few moments, I won't be here. I'd just like to know that I licked this story. It was Angus. You're on your life. I hate to steal this line. But they can't... They can't... They can't sue me for plagiarism where I'm going. You and I... Could have made beautiful music together. Oh, Brad, you've got to believe me. I argued with them. I thought I didn't want to come here, but... But they have a way of making you do things. You don't believe me, do you? Will you do me a favor? It's silly. Just one little kiss. Gee, baby, you smell pretty. Why, you... Oh, no. Naughty, naughty. Sorry, I didn't kill you. You do, baby. And the funny part about it is, I like it. Go ahead. Turn me over to the police. Now, now. I wouldn't share you with anybody. But aren't you going to... You know, I should hate you, but women are such chump. I wish I had that drink now. I'd propose to you. But I got work to do. And after you're through working? Then I'll have the drink. Well, let's go to work. There's something I want to know. Walker. Angus and his crowd have got him. Where is he? If I find out? Phone me, no matter when it is. Then you trust me? Do I know what I'm doing? Where have you been, Brad? I've waited since 2 o'clock for you. I have to do a little leg work. Got anything? Yeah. What? A headache. Hello. You at Alma? Did you get that straight? Yes, it's the Acme Warehouse on 1st Street. When will I see you? I'll be plenty busy tonight. Tomorrow we may be in the dough. Keep your fingers crossed, baby. I will, Brad. What's this? Where'd she get this cannon, Brad? Oh, oh that's a little souvenir. Must have been some party. <laughs> Usual blowout. And what's that? What's what? Say, that looks like a bullet hole. Have you and that slug got anything in common? <laughs> we'll soon find out. See that long scratch on the side? Don't tell me it had an itch. That's a bullet with a trademark, sweetheart. Target practice? Yeah. And some target. Believe me, that's a bullet with a story. Get going. I want to be alone. Go on, beat it, will you? 
So long. So long. Who's the smartest boy in the world? You are, Brad. Second emotion? I certainly do. Come in. Yeah, come in. I thought I told you to go. Have you found him? What happened, Brad? Why didn't we hear from you? I... I can't talk. There's a spy in the house. Are you gonna get out of here? Oh, look, Brad. I haven't had a piece of good news in over six months. You can keep the gravy, but won't you give me some crumbs? Honest? Honest. I cross my heart when I got a sore finger. You're in, thief. Please, Mr. McKay, haven't you heard from my father? I got a tip. The warehouse where we're at. Now, don't get excited, honey. I'll have your father back before the night's over. You two wait here. I gotta get down to the office and set up some coffee. It's getting late. See this? These two little things? Knocked off Lloyd Pearson. Where'd you get them? Read about it in the Chronicle. And the news. I don't want anybody to leave this room until I'm set. You watch him. You watch him. You watch both of them. Here are your two blow-ups. One of the slugs and one of the gun. Thanks, Teddy. Say, uh, how did my picture turn out? It's in the modern art exhibit. They love animal life. Well, uh, here's the works. This is perfect. You sure you got everything? Enough to cinch the case. Hold it. The boss. Playing games. Wants to know everything we're doing with his money. Hello, Norris. Rayburn. Looks like McKay might break the Pearson case. Yeah, he found the murder weapon. Yes, I've got the gun right here. And I figured we'd turn it over to the police. Huh? Okay, Chief. Right away. He wants you to go right up to his house with the whole layout. It's so important he wants to put his personal okay on the story. You got a sack to put this stuff in? Hold it a minute. Maybe there's something in Norris's office. Isn't it great to be rich? Have a beautiful office. Never use it. Days? I let him off for tonight. Sure believe in privacy, Chief. A case like this, it pays. What have you got? Well, there's your copy. And here's the evidence. This is dynamite. We've got to be sure. We've got two witnesses that'll back us up. The woman who had that gun and you, Walker. There are many guns like that. For instance, I have one. But not with a bore like the murder gun. Okay, exactly how much do you know? Here's the works. That's funny. It was an envelope that held a hundred thousand dollars. Sit down. Unfortunately, you'll never find the woman. Angus got suspicious. You're smooth, McKay, even with the women. But to find out if she shot Pearson, 
If she had the gun, she wouldn't have left it there. No, she didn't. About Hugh Walker, you never would have got to him. The orders were to shoot anybody that got into the warehouse. They were waiting for you, but you got ambitious and had to write your story. So I brought you here. Nobody will ever be able to prove that I got here. Generally, that's the idea. Handle that thing like an expert. I am. Angus is the only guy that knows who the top man is. Generally, that's the idea, too. Now get up. We're going places. Looks like I got my little story and I'll never be able to write it. Huh? All right, start for the door. And the city remains a rotten, stinking cesspool. I find it very productive. After all, that's my business. Brad McKay talking. Carl, how'd you get me? Through the office? I love you, sweetheart. What? They got impatient. Why did you tell me that guy was a fullback? Yeah. Yeah. They went to the warehouse. The warehouse! Baby, you're a lifesaver. And I'm not kidding. Forget the crumbs. I'm gonna give you a whole slice. Something always happens, Chief. Poetic justice. Retribution. Oh, the rewrite man, I got a lot of words for it. I'm just gonna call it a lucky break. Big shiny horseshoe just fell right out of my sleeve. What do you think you hit on? You sure those hoodlums at the warehouse have got orders to shoot, to kill? That's the word. Well, that boy of yours is walking right into it. You're a liar. It's some trick. Guy has been lagging for me. Met up with Walker's daughter. The two of them hit it off. He was going with me to Spring Walker. I got tied up. Kids got impatient. They're on the way there right now. I got that from the phone call. We gotta stop it. Angus won't help you. Angus can't help you. The cops are there already. I called the inspector before I left the office. Told him the whole layout. All except uh, about you, you know. I didn't know that then. Angus, you've got to... Yes, of course I will. Hey, it's the rain! John? I know, but you got to get out of there. Stay where you are, please. Where? I'm not shooting. You hear? It's a raid. What about Angus? What about Angus? Come on, up we go. We've got to get there and stop them. They'll kill Guy. They won't listen to you. Angus has got to tell them. Your friends just got Angus. You're coming with me. Norris, you're through. I don't mind going to your funeral. Shut up. Sorry, Brad. I couldn't keep her in the apartment. Then we went to the police station. And... That's all right, fella. Just keep away from there. The publisher of the Daily Chronicle gave his life tonight to bring the racketeers of this city to justice. John Angus, the power behind the rackets, was killed in a gun battle with the police. Lester Norris will long be remembered for his heroism. Gentlemen. It isn't true, I know, but give the kids something to look up to, you know, something to fight for. Make this the best city in the world. It'd been a better story if it had a woman's angle. Dish by the name of Alma Dorn. Good. You 
better let her go. She's the one that turned over the murder gun. Yeah. Oh, sure. Just one of my stooges. That's the way I get my information, blue eyes. Okay. Your father was there to save you. He knew what you were walking into. Sacrificed his life for yours. Always remember him that way. Gives you something to shoot at, kid. Pretty big load for a young fella to carry. You could use a little help. Thanks for getting me out, Fred. You did me a favor. Will you do one for me? I might. What is it? Would you like a drink? I told you what happens when I have a drink. I know. There's just one left, a memo of the Harlow Club. before it begins to work. Where are you going? Where I belong. Here's where you belong, baby. 